All right, guys. So I was called out to the shop, right? So I got a 2014 Nissan Versa. So customer complaint is that they were power washing the engine to clean it, but um, now it's a crank no start. Right, so I'm at this shop where he brought the vehicle to and they asked if I can check it out for him, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is put the scan tool on this vehicle, see what I'm getting, right? I believe they said that they replaced the, or tried to replace the pedal sensor, right? They threw a pedal sensor at it because a pedal sensor code came up, so this is how we met it, right? So again so I'm gonna put the scan tool on this vehicle and see what's going on man and what you know what transpiring with this vehicle sorry about that alright so let's put the key on engine off All right let's let matter of fact before we do anything let's crank this vehicle and listen to how it sounds right so I'm yo Randy you gotta crank that for me please alright go ahead crank One more time. All right, so it doesn't sound too healthy. It sound like they're losing compression. Um, let's see what's going on here. Do we have coolant? This car been sitting down for a bit. Go ahead, crank. Stop. So definitely have a compression issue. Um, it sound like it is, but let's verify first. Let's put the scan tool on and see exactly if it does. I believe, I believe it does. Or is it been like flood, flooded due to they continuously cranking this vehicle, trying to start it? I'm not sure. It's a 2014. All right, let's scan for any codes and see what's going on. So I got one code on the ECM. All right, other than that, everything else looking, you know, good. Um, so we gotta ask ourselves what's causing this crank no start, but yet it got an APP code they said, All right? But um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some checks first, right? I'm seeing 303,000 kilometers on the dash, so let's see what's going on, man. I mean, you know, they probably had things unplugged, or I'm not sure. So let's go into ECM. So we got a P2138 APP sensor, right? Okay, so um, we got an APP sensor issue, but we also have a crank no start. Well, crank, yeah, it's definitely a crank no start. So my fuel trims is like this, it's coal on that flag. Um, I wasn't driving anywhere. Um, okay, so we're not really seeing anything here. Cool. Okay, so next thing I like to do is let's read data stream. Let's look for the APP, right? I'm expecting to see sensor one and sensor two basically identical. Okay, so I'm seeing 0 0.78 and 0 0.84. Is it? Matter of fact, let's come out of here. Let's go back into read four code. So it's telling me that the APP sensor have an issue. But which one? Is it one or two? For what I'm seeing here, um, it looks like sensor two because I'm accustomed seeing 0 0.78 on sensor one and sensor two. And right now I'm seeing 0 0.5 volts let's blow this up in fact let's combine them, these two they're supposed to mimic each other all right but that's our next issue right let's see why this vehicle is not starting right i'm going to do a compression test rc test and once we do rc test we will figure out what's our next move because he did say he was um trying to clean the engine bay I'm not sure if water went down the um, hole or I'm not sure. So let's let's figure it out. 
Hi guys, so I got my sink set up on um, core number three, right? I also got my relative compression um, set up and my high end clamp on the negative pole, right? So let me stop this. Go ahead and crank. Right, stop. So it seems like I definitely have a fault. Ram gain no spark either. Okay, so we have matter of fact let me just do this test over and see what's going on because it definitely looked like you don't have any spark either. Okay, so let's do over this um RC test. Go ahead and crank. Alright, so let's stop this. All right, let's see what's going on. So I'm not getting no spark, um, and I have low compression. I have low comp a dead hold actually. Wow. So we got no compression in one cylinder, and we got actually like it, it looked like a dead hold in one, no compression in the cylinder, and low compression in others, and we also have no spark. So we have to figure out why we don't have no spark. All right, cool. So um, I gotta go into that fuse box and see where the, the ignition fuse is. Okay, so as I said, I'm not sure if water went into this um, this fuse box when he was washing the fuse. I mean, washing the engine. So we need to see which um, fuse is for this um, this number 15 right here. So with the ignition on, we're gonna just check our fuse, make sure everything is good across that 15 amp. Let's go across the 15 amp real quick. Let me see how in voltage, if I'm getting anything through that fuse. I'm getting 12 volts on both sides. So that's letting me know that that fuse is good, right? So we got a, right, so we're getting 12 volts on the fuel pump also. So we're gonna check on core number four and see what we get. If we gain any, what voltage we gain. Okay, what we're gonna do next is, since we gain um, current coming to here, I'm not sure if the ECU is sending a signal. So I'm gonna hook up to core number four with the secondary and also the signal I'm expecting to see it right here right so the next thing I want to do is this let's um we do this right so we know we have low compression in that cylinder I'm going to put this one on it is a uh, times one so I'm going to put it to 10 volts All right um Okay, and let's we do this check and see why we're not getting no signal or spark coming out. So. Okay, so we're definitely not seeing no signal. Definitely not seeing a signal coming out the ECU. And we have low compression also so we're not getting no signal at all okay let's try a different pin just in case yes let's see if I was on the correct pin the green is the signal and the uh, Red is a secondary, so I'm not seeing anything at all. Okay, so I am getting 12 volts on this leg, right? So that's letting me know that I'm getting power. All right, I'm getting power. Let's put the key back on. The key is on. Okay, I do have a ground. Let's see why am I not gaining any 
Facebook, so I just got signal. I just got power. Did I? So I'm not sure if it's my pin. Yeah. Is the problem? Yeah. So I had some pin issues, All right? So you see, I'm getting 12 volts right on that signal wire. Not the signal wire. The power wire, which is a brown. The black is the ground and this one has to be our trigger. Okay. So this trigger comes from the ECU. So let's see what's going on, right? Let's stop this. And we start. Go ahead. Okay, let's stop this and let's zoom in here and see. Let's zoom in here and see if we gain anything nothing okay um i wonder if he will soak the ecu and the transmission i'm not sure but let's try it again okay so what i'm seeing here i'm not getting no spark I'm not getting no signal at all on so I'm not getting no spark, I'm not getting no signal. Why is that? It's not a power problem, it's not a ground problem, it's a signal problem. So he was the owner was cleaning in this area, right? So this here is a transmission and that is the Hi folks. So the battery died on my camera, so I gotta do it with my phone. So just bear with me if you see like having issues to focus. Right now, um, I mean, if you want to send me the new iPhone and stuff like that, it's up to you. You know, I take donations. But um, <laughs> but let's do. Let's go back in this week, all right? 2014. All right, we're gonna go on ECM. If you recall, we did have the fault with the app sensor right now um, the p2138 but i believe there's more than that that's happening to this vehicle right um so we're gonna read the fault codes right so we get an app p2127 and p2138 um i didn't have anything on plug so it's telling me that app2 have the issue so i mean i could diagnose the app2 but I'm not even going to go through that right now because I came about some other issues. Um, if you can recall, he was hearing me mention that this vehicle sound like it has low compression. But check this out, right? Let's go on all signals. Let's go and look at engine speed, right? So from the engine speed, I'm supposed to be using the crank sensor. Let's look for anything else that can help us see what's going on um start signal right okay so right now you see that my engine rpm is at zero my injector is 8.54 and my start signal is off so i'm going to start the vehicle and watch that zero rpm let's try it again Right, so you see that I'm getting zero RPM, right? So that's lead me to either the ECU or if it's the um, crank sensor or even the harness, right? So if you can recall again, I did mention that he um, was cleaning his engine, right? So let's come out of there, right? And let's go to the front of the car. I'm hooked onto my crank shaft signal wire right um so i'm also monitoring the speed of the engine speed right here and the start signal right while we're cranking right so go ahead and crank all right stop okay so let's see what's going on right so the red is my let's see what i could do here right so the red trace is my ignition coil pickup that's on number four Right, I'm also seeing I'm not getting no spark. 
right? And I think, I believe one of the technicians did mention that, right? I still have compression issue, right? I'm seeing basically, only seeing like three strong peaks with one dead peak, right? So that's also letting me know that I have, um, what you call it, a dead hole in my, let's see if I can clean that up. So you, so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. It's, okay so I'm expecting to see at least four peaks what you're seeing is one peak two peak no peak one peak two peak three peak no peak and it's keep repeating itself so that's let me know definitely I have a um, dead hole I'm not sure if it's water that went into the engine All right um, I'm gonna let the owner of the shop know so he can discuss it with the customer um, what they need to do about this engine if they want to do I, I mean I'm going to recommend that they do a manual compression test first right and probably throw some um, what you call it engine oil or transmission oil into the engine to see if it can free up the rings right um to free up the rings you know it could be you know salvage the engine but I want to show you some right definitely looks like we have a short in this harness so let's get this running, All right? So while I'm shaking, I want to shake the harness right here in this area. While I'm shaking the harness, everything is secured. You'll see that I'm getting this. Like it's a short. So and that's on the crank signal phone that's going to the sensor. So. I'm not sure exactly why they said he was trying to clean it but I mean he did a poor job of trying to clean his engine because I'm still seeing a lot of debris and, and oil stains and whatever you want to call it so I'm not sure exactly how good he cleaned his engine or was trying to clean it but as I shake the harness here you are seeing that is let me see if I can get you is here right there so we definitely got a short going to the crank signal so I'm trying to see if I could get it to stay up right uh, I did my checks from the ECU and I did my checks from the ECU and I'm getting five volts on the I'm getting five volts off the um, the, the brain box and I'm getting 5 volts, I'm getting 12 volts, I'm getting power, I'm getting ground, but ever so often the crankshaft is sick, I mean sensor is not getting what you're supposed to get, right? So that can, you know, um, let us know that we have a weak signal going to the crankshaft that's causing the vehicle not to start, right? So yeah, that's about it. Okay, um, yeah, so also if you look you see i'm saying like 112 before top dead center 112 before <laughs> so timing off i guess <laughs> the car isn't running in fact let's let's i mean it should clean up when the you're cranking but 112 is reading so i'm not sure what that means right the ignition timer can never be 112 before top dead center but look right here you see it's much more I'm trying to shake the harness. I'm shaking the harness and you see that the signal for dropping out. Okay, so when we shake this harness right here, if you take a look at the scan data here, you see in, look, you see APP2, we're in APP1. So this is what the short is see right here every time I shake here yeah. so these two supposed to be mimicking each other and you also see that moving on as the current okay so um we're gonna wrap this up as I said I'm gonna recommend that they replace the 
engine or try to see if they could get the compression back up in the engine and replace the harness. Approximately 10 hours later. All right, so we're doing a compression test here on number one cylinder. Getting 85 on number one. No leaks. Cylinder number two. Cylinder number three. One eighty five one thing. Cylinder number four. Yeah, tumble. Yeah. One eighty five. Yeah, so I got the guys to take this harness apart, and we definitely found some broken wires, a few of them actually. Right, and that's why we was getting the shorter power on the crank um, signal, and also we was getting the voltage, you know, varying on the APP. Right, so we're gonna fix this up. Right, and once we get that done, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with the engine, and hopefully it start right up. Right, so these guys did a good job of, you know, securing the wires, and you know, was able to tape it up and put the harness back together as best as they can. So I'm confident that they will get this car um, started up I mean if we have a misfire due to the compression loss I mean it's up to the customer to figure out what he would like to do next if you want to replace the engine or not but um, I, they also mentioned that they have the valve cover to change the gasket and the, of course it has some oil down in the spark plugs so once they get that done they, um, I believe this vehicle will start right up okay, so I was able to diagnose this vehicle right using a simple process and yeah until next time, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, share, comment. Later.